This is our National Biodiversity uh, Diagnosis course. And essentially, um, this is a very short introduction to what this particular course is about. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail, but just to give us kind of a, uh, an idea of why we're all here. Um, I think it's a fair thing to do to assert that biodiversity informatics really has not achieved much in the way of synthesis. Um, and without the synthesis, it's awfully hard to be able to say what we know versus what we don't know yet. Um, so essentially, ideally, we would be able to sum summarize the state of knowledge of biodiversity we would be able to understand biodiversity patterns across regions of interest for taxa of interest. The birds of Kenya, the plants of Uganda. If we're able to do that, we're going to be able to detect uh, hot spots and prioritize areas that should see protection. But we also should be able to identify the gaps in our knowledge and be able to identify sites that we don't know enough. Uh, they may be important, they may be unimportant, they may have unique species, they may have unknown species. So this is, this is what we're talking about when we talk about a biodiversity information diagnosis. Okay, essentially a state of knowledge. I showed you this, this slide a little bit ago these biodiversity information diagnoses kind of cover this area, okay? They're bridging between where are species and what are the species that are present. Uh, again, this is a messy slide, but the idea is a good biodiversity information diagnosis links those two aspects of the question. So what we're trying to do in this course is to give you an idea of basic concepts and interesting ideas in this very general field of summarizing elements of biodiversity across regions. We want to work with each of the trainee groups to develop existing data sets into useful analyses. The Big goal is to develop each of those analyses into a publishable paper. At all points, we want to discuss and debate interesting ideas. And we want to cap capture everything digitally so that not just the 20 of us benefit from this, but maybe somebody who couldn't be here. Okay? And just to give you one little element one example of this, during our South Africa course on building biodiversity information institutions, there was a conversation between Jean Ganglo and Alex and Moses and me and maybe a couple other people were there. And that idea was a good idea. It was very interesting. And at our Ghana course, six of us sat down for a few days and we discussed that idea more and more. We wrote a proposal. And now you're going to start hearing about the West African Plants Initiative, which has just been funded also by JRS Foundation. But that idea was really born two courses ago. And so, you know, it's worth it. It's worth taking ideas that spin out of having, you know, 20 smart people sitting around a table and exploring them. And so that's why we do things like work exactly where we live and eat, okay? And that way we have time in the evenings or time uh, in the breaks to be able to discuss and develop some of these ideas. So here's what we want to do this course, and I know this is a little small. But day one, introductions, Next, after this, we're going to do introductions around the room so that everybody at least gets a first idea of who everybody is. 
And then we'll talk a bit about the plans for publication, talk about data cleaning, which will use up the second half of the morning. And then in the afternoon, we want to go through each of the data sets and have everybody get kind of a first view of the projects. By day two, we're going to talk about data analysis, um, how do you measure completeness of inventories, uh, how do you manage differential sampling effort, can we uh, establish baseline points for detection of future change, things like that. And in the afternoon, what we're going to do is probably the simplest of the analyses, which is just what are the spatial gaps? You know, what are the big holes in the map between areas of solid knowledge of floras and in one case, faunas? <laughs> uh, day three will be environmental gaps. That's a little harder because you see those spatial gaps but those may be spatial gaps in the midst of the same environments. So we can ask, of the unsampled areas, or of the poorly sampled areas, which are different geographically? Sorry, environmentally. For example, you might sample 95% of Uganda, but not get to the peaks of the Ruanzori Mountains, which are a completely different environment. By day four, we'll be talking about, okay, now we've thought about the gaps. Now, within what we do know, what about patterns of species richness, patterns of endemism? So what, what kind of biologically, in term, and not in terms of sampling, but in terms of, of what we're really after, what do we know? And by day five, we're going to switch gears a fair amount. We're going to talk about writing papers. Okay? Um, I have a course. It's actually already captured and already available to you on the BITC webpage. Uh, but we'll go over uh, a somewhat abbreviated version of it uh, because I think it might be useful. And we're going to talk a lot about effective figures. My personal opinion is that that's where a lot of um, scientists fail, right? We're good scientists, but we're bad artists, and we're bad graphic designers. And we're very fortunate to have Arturo here because he's very good with this. Um, and then day six is fairly free form. We'll talk about last details of analysis, visualization, and writing. We'll talk more about the special issue of biodiversity informatics. We will set some due dates and deadlines. And then we want your feedback about what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong in this course. OK? So the very general plan is see if you can have had breakfast and be down here by 8.30. That way we get started right on time. It's easy today. But by Thursday or Friday, you're going to be pretty tired. And we will be, too. Um, so get here a little bit early. <laughs> 9 to 11, we'll be doing mainly lectures. We'll take a break at 11. 11.30 to 1, more lectures and content. An hour for lunch. Hour and a half more of either lectures or work. Sorry, I should have fixed that. Um, a break, and then more time. So in the afternoon, we'll tend to do more uh, hands-on work and you know, try to get into each of your data sets to achieve the goals of that day. So <laughs> is that saying that my lecture sounds like it's 10 hours long? <laughs> so here are your instructors for the week. Um, we're very fortunate that Arturo accepted to come from uh, Pamplona in Spain. And then we have two doctoral students from the University of Kansas, both with the misfortune of working with me. Um, Lindsay, who tends to do uh, geography of diseases, but does a lot more than that. And Kate, 
who is working on um, geography of pelagic birds of the southern oceans, but also does more than that. And if you get to know her, you'll find that the working with birds is all a facade and that she really is into herpetology. Um, this, I don't know why this is not working. And then at the end, whenever you have trouble, whenever you need anything, just come to Kate and me and we'll, we'll fix it. Um, and most importantly, those are my granddaughters, Daenerys and Kalesi. Um, those are the new pictures. And if you see the screen on my computer, that's a year ago. So uh, she's three and she's about to turn two. In fact, this course was planned for mid-January because her birthday's on February 4th, so I have to be back by then. 